Buck <laughs> Poor chicken man, he doesn't deserve this. <laughs> oh, I'm dying here. Update time, hello. We actually have a lovely new screen that introduces all the new stuff, isn't that great? Before we get into the new stuff, a bit of disclosure here, I am a Warframe partner, so I got a bunch of stuff for free. Also, thank you Lukiete for the adapters, I really appreciate it. So, as far as the new stuff goes, we have a brand new Warframe called Dante, who comes in with 300 base health, 150 base shields, 145 base armor, 200 base energy, and a base sprint speed of 1.15. Dante is genuinely interesting, he has a moddable, exalted bug gun, and he uses a combo system where his second and third ability determine the outcome of his fourth ability. Then we have a new incarnate secondary called the Onos, which has the tiniest little stat page, it does pure puncture damage and it has good crit and status. And finally we have a new exalted spawning weapon called Ruvox, which kind of looks like you've duct taped a bunch of broncos to your fists. This one does pure impact with solid crit and status and it has very good attack speed as well. Now I will make full videos about these in the upcoming days, but this is just a quick overview so let's keep going. Okay. I'm sorry, I can't help myself. So where do you get this new stuff? Well, you have to go to Armatus, a new Murmur Disruption on Deimos. This is level 55 to 60. As far as I can tell, this works like any other disruption, with the big beeping guys being Void Dregs. You do get a new resource called Vessel Capillaries when you kill the Void Dregs, though. I have a feeling this is gonna make a lot of people happy, because well, Disruption is popular for a reason. It's a good game mode. They actually made some improvements to Disruption as well. When you hear the beeping of the Demolishers, you now get a target icon on them, which is nice, especially if you don't play with sound. And they also changed the red conduit to a yellow or an orange conduit to distinguish it from the target icon on the Demolishers. Now, the fibers you get from the Void Dregs are basically bad luck protection, because you can take them over to Lloyd and buy the stuff that you're farming the disruption for, as well as a Riven Transmuter, two new Captura scenes, a new Sanctum Simulacrum, which looks quite nice, as well as some credits if you already have everything. Next up, we have changes to Netrasal drop table. So what they did here is they removed all the non-legendary arcanes and then tweaked the drop chances a little bit. Regular Archon charts now have a 17.5% chance to drop, Melee Arcane Adapter has a 15% chance to drop, both Crescendo and Duplicate have a 10% chance to drop, and Tau Fees have a 4.17% chance to drop. Up next, we have a bit of an expansion to Archon Shard Fusion. So in addition to Coalescent Fusion, you can also do Ascent Fusion, where you select three of the same shards to get a Tau Forged one. This does cost 100 Stella to do though, so bear that in mind. Next on the menu we have 11 new Warframe Augments, some of which seem very spicy indeed, but I'm not gonna go through them here because I don't want this video to be too long. So if you want to know what they do, you can either read very quickly, or you can pause the video, or you can check out the link in the video description which will take you to the forum post. Moving on to ability changes, with one of the biggest ones of course being Mirage's Eclipse. This is now a two-part ability, if you tap it you get Lunar Eclipse, if you hold it you get Solar Eclipse, and you can switch between them at will. It's also no longer affected by light, so it provides a static amount of either weapon damage or damage reduction. Additionally, the damage reduction has been capped to 90% rather than 95, like it was before. They also changed the numbers on the subsumed version of Eclipse to be more reasonable. Then of course we have the Inaros rework, so his one is still pocket sand, this also showcases the new icon that appears above enemies that are open to finishers. His two is now Sandstorm, this drags enemies to you and opens them up and all that so you can do finishers on them, it's actually quite nice, you can move around much faster than you were able to move around before, very good. His third ability is now the armor portion of his old four and you can move around while you're charging it, which is nice. And his fourth is the damage portion or the Skyra portion of his old fourth. This now does a percent of your maximum health as corrosive damage to any enemy affected by it while proking corrosive on them and spawning sand cavats that can also spread the swarm around when they hit enemies. It's actually kind of disgusting. Now there are a few other ability and passive changes but they're not as impactful as the Mirage and Inaros ones. So let us keep moving. Warframes that have invisibility now have a new customization option. If you go into attachment and auxiliary you can now choose between glow cloak semi-cloak or complete invisibility. I like this. This is nice. Next up we have Omnia Fishers. These are actually very cool. I like them an awful lot. They will only spawn on Lua, Zariman and in the new lab tile set on Deimos and they don't have a specified relic type so you can run whatever relic you want in them. They also finally added a steel path variant to the new bounties and they finally changed slam attacks and made them scale with mods. 
Up until now, slam attacks worked in two parts. You had the actual slam damage if you hit the enemy directly, and then you had slam radio damage for all the enemies hit by the AoE. The vast majority of enemies you hit with slams are hit by slam radio damage, which was not affected by 99.99% of mods. One of the main issues here was that even special slam effects, like for example the shockwaves on some Podes, were considered radio damage, so you couldn't scale them outside of the Nira set and like one mod. Well, that's now a thing of the past, because all slam damage is now considered slam radio damage and is affected by mods. So the Jetski Tag video that I released earlier today, yeah, that build does like 10 times the damage now. This is straight up my favorite thing in this update, it's fantastic. We still need to figure out what works and what doesn't, and what is worth doing and what is not worth doing, but one thing is for sure, this will bring about a whole new build style for melee weapons. And that's pretty much it for what I consider to be the major changes that came with this update. So I thank you very much for watching, as always guys, and I hope you have enjoyed the video. I would also like to extend a special thank you to all the channel members, thank you very much guys, I really appreciate your support, it means a lot to me, and if you would like to become a channel member as well, by the way, you can check out the memberships and stuff down below. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.